Before finding MMA, Benoit Saint-Denis was one of the most elite soldiers in the French Special Forces. His days were spent deep in the heart of Africa, fighting against dangerous terrorist organizations. That Saint-Denis guy is a f***ing killer. Savage. He's probably killed people with rocks, you know what I'm saying? Like, he knows how to kill people. He don't give a fuck he about just, cage fight. He gets it But by pure chance, he stumbled upon mixed martial arts. Yeah, 2017, I don't know why. I, I, I saw a poster of my, my current uh, ground coach uh, on a car. Uh, with uh, two guys doing BGG and I was like, uh, I was curious and uh, I tried it and I was like, oh, it's good stuff, it's some good stuff. And after discovering his extreme natural talent, hung up his gun in favor of a pair of MMA gloves and never looked back. Now, the man they call God of War is the boogeyman of the most talent stacked division in the world. Growing up, the idea of MMA wasn't on the cards for Benoit Saint-Denis at all. Instead, his only path was following in his father's footsteps and enlisting in the French army. Yeah, it's uh, like one and a half years of uh, formation to, to, to be special in the Special Air Service, coming from nothing. Uh, I, I, I believe it's uh, the only Special Forces in Europe where you can go from no army uh, directly into the Special Forces, but only 10% make, make, make it out. Wow. Like we were 60 at the beginning, only 10% makes it out for, from the year and a half training and then you you, you are a special force in in france and uh, um, the period i have been serving in was uh, all about the subsaharan desert you know uh, fighting boko haram fighting al Khan. i have been fighting al Khan a lot so um, a couple of um, uh, identified uh, terrorist group but saint denis wasn't just your run-of-the-mill soldier he was part of the french ss the equivalent of a navy seal for years, he was deployed deep in the heart of Africa, fighting against extreme terrorist groups. All too often, it would turn deadly. You have to be a good shooter when you are in special force, but right. because of, you know, no state's liberation, if you don't shoot the right head, it's not gonna be yes. good for your career. So you have to be good at it. It's your, it's, it's one of, of the biggest specialty you, you have to be good you at. You worked it with hostage liberation. Yeah, yeah, yeah of course. It's, wow. it's part of the job, you know. Uh, um, that must be very stressful in addition to everything else. But just because yeah. you're dealing, it's so close, right? Yeah, yeah. The, the margin of error. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's very close. One of his biggest missions was Operation Serval, where St. Denis and numerous other parts of the French army recaptured the Timbuktu airport in Mali that was taken by terrorists. Uh, overall in Africa, we took back uh, Tumbuktu, the airport in Tumbuktu, and our president uh, went there uh, after we took it back, uh, a couple of months after. Uh, yeah, it, it was uh, uh, an adventure and uh, I loved it. But one day in 2017, by pure chance, Benoit Saint-Denis stumbled across a Brazilian jiu-jitsu poster and decided to try it out. We will, we will uh, walk on for, from that and uh, like you said, it's uh, and I will give the UFC more worth, they know it, and uh, I'm getting back uh, back to work. Uh, like Paul he said, you have to go back to work, uh, take your time and go back to work, and that's why, uh, what I'm going to do. So on even e even given those conditions, uh, uh, it's difficult when you have a, a huge opportunity like that to say no. From there, St. Denis was hooked. He began watching the UFC more often, started kickboxing the following year, and discovered MMA. 15 days later, Benoit Saint-Denis entered an eight-man amateur MMA tournament and was the last man standing, despite just one year of BJJ and less than a year of kickboxing. There's a passion for mixed martial arts. Uh, when I started BJJ 2017, I loved it. Then uh, 2018, I started kickboxing. I was like, I like both. <laughs> and then I tried MMA like in September 2019. 15 days later, I, I did a amateur tournament. I won, and then I I, I asked myself, okay, I want to do this for for a living. But Benoit Saint Denis had a lot more experience than just that. From eight to 16 years old, he trained judo and earned a black belt alongside his four younger brothers, all of whom went on to serve in the French military. God of War. Uh, who gave you that nickname? Uh, yeah, it's uh, it was a choice of my uh, my brother. In uh, so I have four little brothers. We are family of five guys. So just behind me, it's a medicine. Just behind that, it's a um, a fireman. Then against medicine, so I'm 
uh, we have like always w uh, one guy doing the brawling stuff, one guy doing the sinking stuff, brawling, sinking, brawling, and uh, yes, yeah, the, the, the sinking guys of the of my brother's part are, have chosen that because um, they find uh, it it was good with the. Uh, with my past and uh, yes uh, I have been making war on my family has been making war since a long time my father is in military grandfather military uh, military family since uh, I don't know when of course being a part of the French special forces hand-to-hand -hand combat was a big part of his training and after discovering that there was an actual career to be made in MMA Benoit Saint Denis and 30 vastly more experienced fighters went to the Venum training camp in Paris for tryouts under the keen eye of coach Daniel Wara. My head coach Daniel Wara at the Venum training camp in Paris and I was uh, one of the only guys without a fight that was selected uh, uh, with a guy like Morgan Chaya who is in the UFC now mm -hmm. uh, but he had already like uh, uh, more than um, 10 professional fights. So I was thinking if this guy, uh, Daniel Warren, who has been training Anderson Silva and Anderson, a lot, lot of tough guys, if he says this guy uh, um, is a bet I have to take, um, then uh, I have to go. Wara, who had trained the likes of Anderson Silva, Lioto Mashida, Dan Henderson and Vitor Belfort, told Benoit St. Denis he had a big future in MMA should he pursue it. And with that vote of confidence from someone who had coached former UFC champions, it made Saint Denis realize he had serious potential as an MMA fighter. So in early 2019, Saint Denis didn't extend his contract with the army and instead went all in on MMA alongside his coach. He had just enough money for two years or else he'd likely end up back in the military. People making it out is very small cause out of 60, only six make it because we are getting mixed up with people like with five to 10 years experience in other regiment, uh, like uh, six months after the beginning of the formation. And out of uh, the, those guys are more experienced and they kick out a lot of young guys. So I make it out and I was proud of that. In his first 11 months as a pro, BSD competed six times. Outside of a no contest due to an accidental head clash, he finished all five fights. It brought him to a bigger organization in Brave Combat Federation, where he'd finished the next three guys put in front of him. And remember, this is someone who had a huge experience disadvantage against almost everyone he steps in the cage with. But a sanctioned MMA fight with a referee to protect you must feel like a game of football in comparison to having bullets and bombs fly past your head on a daily basis. Only one year and a half after entering, I, I became a man, so yeah, I think the special forces uh, um, uh, put me on uh, cold blood and uh, good mentality. After finishing every single opponent put in front of him, Saint Denis was one of the hottest prospects in Europe. And it earned him a call to the UFC, but the circumstances were far from perfect. He was having to fight on just three weeks' notice, up a weight class against Eliseo Zaleski dos Santos, who not that long before was on a seven-fight UFC win streak. In the end, St. Denis was comfortably handed his first ever loss. Yeah, there were at least two or three moments where it was pretty clear that the referee should have stopped it. You know, he, he ended up making the, the fight a lot tougher than it should have been. And, uh, you know, just sorry for the guy because, you know, he ended up getting injured way more than he should have. But that wasn't the end of the story because just less than five months later, Dos Santos failed a USADA drug test and was banned for a year after that type of outing, of course. Uh, you know, to be honest, Benoit Saint-Denis is an undefeated fighter because uh, my only loss by decision against top 15 uh, welterweight Elysieux, the guy gets popped for Ostarin three months after our fight. So I don't know why I don't have my no contest now. In France, I would have a win by disqualification with the Federation. So I would really like the UFC to work on that. Uh, you know, I love this organization, but if you want to fight against doping, the guy gets caught. Whether right or wrong, the loss remains on BSD's record to this day. But back down at his true weight class, St. Denis went on a tier at 155 pounds. He had five straight finishes and was winning in every way possible. Whether it was a KO, a submission, breaking his opponent, blitzing them inside a couple of minutes or winning a war, Benoit St. Denis was gaining a serious reputation and his first round head kick knockout on the UFC 295 pay-per-view against Matt Frevola 
was the performance that made him the new boogeyman at lightweight. Because I would imagine there's a lot of people who don't want to fight you right now. Do you feel that? Do you sense that? That it's, as you continue to do this, it's getting harder and harder to get people to sign up to fight you? Yeah, um, I mean, uh, <laughs> I'm young and I'm hungry, so I'm looking for... The and you're really good. Me. I could see these guys maybe five, six, seven, saying like, I want nothing to do with this guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, you know, it's a UFC. It's a, it's a playground of the greatest. So you, they will have no choice. In less than two years as a UFC lightweight, Benoit had broken into the top 15 and was eyeing up the rest of the division. He wanted to fight guys like Rafael Fiziev or Mateusz Gamrot, but instead got a matchup that was seemingly out of reach. The number two ranked Dustin Poirier. It was a huge test so early in his UFC career. He's so good, man. And he's so good so quick. For a guy that started taking martial arts so he could be a better soldier, it is fucking insane to see that guy, like, within six, seven years, become at the top of the heap of the UFC division that's as, as stacked talent-wise as any division. 155 is a fucking shark tank. Against a legend in Dustin Poirier, Saint Denis was the betting favorite going into their pay-per-view co-headliner at UFC 299, which just goes to show how highly he was thought of. But in the lead up to the fight, a big part of the attention was on an unsightly wound on Saint Denis's forehead, one that looked like a staph infection. If it is an active staph infection, there, there, there is things that the commission could do. They, they could stop the fight. They, they could halt the fight. Despite it being all but certainly staff, the fight went ahead. And at the end of the first round, it was BSD looking by far the more dominant fighter. But whether it was due to the staff infection, the antibiotics he had to take, or just the pace of the fight, St. Denis' relentless forward pressure slowed down. And the moment it did, Dustin did what he so often does and found the knockout. This is shit that makes you a fucking legend. These are legendary fights. When you when you go in and you face a guy who is a savage and and and, and uh, you know looks like you can't win this fight or people think you can't win this fight, and then you go in and do it in spectacular fashion the way that he did tonight. It may have been the first time Saint Denis had ever been finished, but he actually gained fans due to his incredible performance. Throw that one. I think that might matter. Throw it out like it didn't happen. I don't see anything bad that comes from the performance. I mean, if we're being fair, then you're gonna concede to what I said. Saint Denis outperformed Poirier. Poirier got the outcome, but the performance, who looked and fought, showed more positions, won more exchanges, started more action, pressed the action, did more damage. I mean, you go right up and down the list. Had that fight been stopped and it turned to the judges, right? It was one of these situations. Poirier was gonna win that fight one way at that point, which was to get him out of there. And no one will ever truly know, but maybe the staff infection played its part. A good fight also because uh, out of respect for him, uh, I would have loved to have a, a bit more energy to give him more than five minutes, you know. Uh, uh, but uh, yeah, it was very difficult. I was tired uh, the whole week with the staff infection and maybe this is also my fault. I came, I came a bit too heavy. So with the treatment I took, um, the the weight was not going down uh, as usually and i had two more kilograms to cut uh, before weight cut it was too difficult and uh, i paid uh, that um, the day after till the morning you don't know if you're gonna recover or not so um, i had to try uh, out of respect for him and for my staff for everybody that has has been uh, putting on this fight and uh, yeah i tried my best and uh, uh, there is no regret. Uh, it's a fight game. Like I said, he's a great champion. He could have knocked me out anyway. Either way, the fight elevated Benoit's status. Now he'll headline a UFC event in France, where not that long ago, MMA was still illegal. At 28 years old, he's young in the game, still getting his experience, and will no doubt be a top contender for many years to come. Speaking of wild lives before the UFC, check out my breakdown video on Brian Ortega's journey from teenage gang shootouts to UFC stardom.